Hi, I'm Tom of New Hot Times. I've recently got a bunch of emails asking me about brown peak banjo and fretless banjo in general, so I thought instead of playing a tune this time I'd uh, just put up a brief tutorial on the basic round peak stroke and how it differs from the regular bump ditty stroke. Uh, and uh, maybe we could do a series of these videos uh, picking apart the elements of round peak claw hammer banjo if there's enough interest. Now the basic bump ditty stroke sounds like this. And the round peak stroke smooths out that bump ditty. It's a bump a ditty rhythm and it sounds like this. And uh, why don't I play them back to back so you can hear the differences. Bump ditty. Round peak. So you can hear round peak rhythm tends to do two things. It takes out the brush stroke of the bump ditty, so it cleans that sound up a little bit, makes it a little more sparse. Uh, it's really one note at a time. Uh, so it, it takes out the brush stroke. The second thing it does is it adds an alternate string pull off. And that makes the the makes it all eighth notes. And so so it, gives it a nice smooth sound. Now, an alternate string pull-off is really the heart of the technique and uh, that's done by pulling off a string with your left hand that you're not picking with your right hand. In this case I'm alternating between the second and first strings. It's a regular bump ditty without the brush. Put in the pull off. So why don't I break that down a little further so you can really see what's going on. Uh, to start, you'll do a basic bump ditty rhythm with your right hand, but instead of the brush, you'll use a single note. Alternating between the second and first strings. Now your pull off will come in. On the first string, with your left hand, I tend to use my middle finger for this particular stroke. First, uh, the mechanics of your pull-off. Uh, you're pulling off towards the, top, the, towards the palm of your hand to get a nice, clean, clear, crisp note from your first string. I'm exaggerating the motion here so you can see it. When you practice it, your motion should be as small as possible. And the pad of the finger is just pulling across that first string as my finger moves to the palm of my hand. So now back to the, what we were just doing. Your basic bump ditty stroke without the brush. And you're going to add your alternate string pull off after your first note on your second string. So it works like this, slowly. Second string downstroke, pull off on the first string, first string downstroke, pull off on the fifth string with your thumb. Uh, we'll try it again. Down on the second, pull off on the first, down on the first, thumb on the fifth string. So you put all that together slowly. The idea behind this is that you want all of the notes to have equal value. It should be very smooth uh, and you should be hearing each note equally in terms of volume. So you want it uh, very, very even. Once you get that, you'll gradually speed up the tempo. Again, 
it should be very even, all notes of equal value. A metronome is going to help you get there, um, even though it can be painful to work with one. Uh, I recommend it. Now, of course, later on, in, as you explore Brown Peak, your, your notes are probably, you, you're going to have subtle value differences when you're doing that kind of move uh, in, to give the music a, a sort of a swing or a lilt. But that'll come on down the line. Just work on getting those notes as even and crisp as possible in the beginning. And there are not lots of exercises you can do to learn it. And uh, one way to do it is to switch up what you're doing with your right hand a little bit in terms of the strings you're striking. So a good exercise is to just, uh, throughout that stroke, to strike a different string as you're working on that alternate string pull-off. So a good exercise uh, is something like this. That's the third string, fourth string, then back up, third string, second string, and then just speed it up. Something like that. There are an endless number of patterns you could do to, to teach yourself the, the stroke with the idea being that uh, you, you, repetition is your friend, unless you're re repeating things badly, which is something you want to avoid. Uh, that you, you, The only way to learn it is to really force your muscles to remember it. So it's something that happens without thinking. Uh, and I think that's all uh, we... Ha why don't we stop there for today? Um, and uh, let's see, for, the, for my future lessons, uh, I'll just pick out uh, different aspects of uh, round peak style banjo that I think are important and uh, I'll break them down for you like that. Uh, and a good book for round peak banjo players, a great book, uh, is by Brad Leftwich. Uh, I think the title is something like round peak style claw hammer banjo, uh, something like that. Do a Google search. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. It comes with a CD uh, that's worth the price of admission right there. Uh, and then, you know, my copy of the book is dog-eared, coffee-stained, and barely legible in places. Um, so it's really a fantastic resource. Uh, and just a disclaimer, I have no financial relationship with Brad Leftwich at all. I, I just find this particular um, instructional book and CD to be absolutely top-notch. And he's uh, one of the finest players uh, around. So highly recommend his stuff. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. And later on down the line, uh, we could perhaps get Johnny Anderson from New Hot Times in to show us the bowing patterns on the fiddle and round peak fiddling and show you how the banjo and fiddle interact in that um, classic round peak banjo fiddle duet format that, that, uh, that is so exciting to listen to. Uh, and thanks to all my subscribers on YouTube. I really appreciate the nice comments. They really keep me going and inspire me to keep playing. And... Uh, Hope to see you uh, more, and uh, cheers to, to everyone.